Chloe Johnson, and we are up here on Main Street tonight with Park City Fine Art at the Prospect Gallery. They have brought the beautiful art and landscapes and animals of Africa to the Claim Jumper tonight to their gallery, all done by Tesha. Now, they talked to us last year that they were going to bring Tesha, one of their artists who does these beautiful, colorful, lifelike paintings to Africa and do a whole series based on that. Tonight, she's finally brought back all the amazing work she's done and we're gonna get to look at it all. We'll be chatting with Tesha and hearing about a great foundation that sprung out of this trip. So Tesha, last time we chatted with you, this whole trip was just starting to be in the works. So what were you most excited for heading out? What did you have in mind? Oh my gosh, I was just so excited to see the animals in Africa. Um, I'd never been to Africa before and it was just the most amazing place and to see these animals where they live and not just to see them but hundreds of them. I mean it's crazy, they're everywhere and they're so beautiful and majestic and massive. I mean in person they're just enormous. And, um, I just, I loved it. It was just so amazing to actually be there. And I mean, we, we built it up and we thought about it and talked about it and planned it for so long. So uh, we started in Tanzania and then we worked our way up to Kenya. Um, we were gone for about 10 days. We are known for the bears and all the really fun mountain wildlife, but that's you, you know, painting the fur. How was it painting elephant hide, for example? Well, that was something I had to learn. It was a little bit of a challenge at first, but it kind of just came to me. Um, I really liked you know, figuring out all the different cracks in the skin and the, the leathery fur, I mean, fur, the leathery <laughs> skin. <laughs> I'm so used to fur. Yeah. And just just the look, I mean, they're, they're so worn and just kind of rough looking. And um, But to infuse that with the colors and the shadows and the different depths of the, the cracked areas, and I really loved it. I mean, I think it's, it's, it's different brushes and different technique, um, but it was a whole different thing for me and this is my second elephant now and I've just loved painting the elephants. They're my new favorite probably. I see here you have a photo of what is right behind us. So you did you go off memory at all or was it mostly photos? You wanted to see it first. I usually like to work from photos so we went there and I did some sketching and I did some painting there but for the most part we were busy snapping away and taking lots of photos and videos um, for reference images for my paintings and so many of these are direct reference, um, d directly referenced from photos we took so this is an example and these are some zebras that we actually saw in I think these were in the Serengeti and they were just so beautiful and they were so cute how they were kind of cuddling up together and I just loved this photo and how the stripes intermixed and so I had to paint it. <laughs> of course infused with some color because that's what I do. Some of the spotted animals like the, the giraffe markings and the leopards and the cheetahs and, and those are a little more tricky because they have so many spots and to, to try to do different colors in them and just get the pattern right and it's it's just tedious more than anything but, but fun. I love painting the big cats so. <laughs> And while you were there, you guys got to visit some really cool schools and have a great experience painting with them. What was that like for you and what do you think the kids got out of that? Oh my gosh, that was just eye-opening. Um, the kids were amazing and you go in this classroom and there's like 50 kindergartners, you know, and they're just running at you and they're so excited and it's overwhelming. They, they speak Swahili and so there's that language barrier. Um, but they're just... the biggest, brightest smiles ever. Um, this was in Kenya specifically where we went to Kensington schools. And they're just so happy and so grateful and they just don't have much at all. You know, it's a very, um, <laughs> the school building is like cement with dirt and there's not, you know, art supplies, there's not nice things. They, they don't have much at all. And so they're just so thrilled and happy to be learning something new. And, and so I got my canvas out and I had something pre-sketched and I let them come and help me paint. And I showed them just kind of how to use colors a little bit. I didn't have to do a lot. And then they just kind of took it and ran with it. And they were awesome. It was so much fun and just um, heartwarming to know, you know, that you're making a difference in their life and hopefully something they'll always remember and that we'll also be doing much more of. We had the thought to bring a little, some kind of an art program and do this every year, if not more than twice a year, and bring out art to them. And they have their own things, so we want to keep it cultural, um, but to have them express to us a lot of their story, because, you know, there's there are about 800 kids at the school with very little, still really happy, and so we wanted to take some of their art 
bring it back to us, sell, sell some of the art, auction off the art, and have all the proceeds go back to the schools to help fund the art program, but also to each school, there's uh, two or three communities, villages connected to it, and their biggest concerns are water, medical needs, and then, you know, most of everything, all the schools after um, the primary school are not paid for, so also back to education. And so all this money will funnel into those things as well to help support the schools and the communities. Tell me a little bit about this beautiful, enormous rhino behind us. Enormous is right. <laughs> this is um, 96 by 72 inches, so pretty much life size, right? And I was so excited to paint a rhino because, as many of us know, rhinos are in you know great danger, and the different species of of rhinos, um, the black rhinos especially, and we did see a black rhino in Africa. This is specifically a white rhino, and it kind of has a story. Um, I was inspired to paint a white rhino specifically because the last um, male northern white rhino, which is a subspecies of the white rhino, recently died in March. His name was Sudan, and so this is titled Sudan because it's in honor of him. <laughs> And so this was a really special piece for me because I just think that we need to save the rhinos and I'm, you know, I, I want to see more of them in life. You know, we all do, they're beautiful. So. And Sudan was supposedly, I never met him, <laughs> but a very gentle rhino and they just loved him at the conservancy he lived at and um, just a really sweet animal, but massive. So just goes to show that animals have souls and they're a lot more like us than we think. So I like to bring that out in the paintings. We love catching up with Tesha. She's such an incredible artist, and we're so excited to see all the amazing work she brought back. Her stuff is always up in the Park City Fine Art Galleries here on Main Street, and she does take commissions when she's not too busy, so make sure you check in with those. Come and check them out when you're up here on Main Street. We'll be back with a lot more.